everyone yeah. good evening uh, welcome to the webinar on digital transformation of indian businesses by mr sailesh hari bhakti i hand over the session to our coordinator of the program mr nipam shah governing council member of ama yeah over to you nipam sir thank you radhika and welcome everyone in this uh, webinar i think uh, uh, i am very happy to uh, Uh, coordinate this webinar with our beloved and revered guest of today uh, sailesh bhai hari bhakti i think at ama all of us know him so well and so fondly remember for uh, various lectures and visits that he has paid us and we have taken this opportunity to have him here today to speak on a very interesting subject of today and that is uh, digital transformation of indian businesses uh though we all know sailesh bhai you know i'll just uh, perform my duty to uh you know take you through a great journey um uh, that he has lived through uh, sailesh bhai uh, is a champion of governance and a very revered corporate advisor of our country uh, sailesh bhai is uh, a uh, richly experienced with his very close and 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 uh, meaningful association with the indian corporates of all size and all sectors uh, he has been the chairman on the board of the companies like blue star future lifestyle lnt uh, finance nsdl e governance uh, lnt mutual fund uh, and apart from that uh, cii western zone uh, and quite a few other companies selishwa is also on the board of large number of known companies like acc uh, ambuja cement bajaj electricals bennett coleman uh, cloud info solution gaja capital mahindra life science and our own amdabad's company torrent pharmaceutical selishbhai is also the chairman of united ways of india a, an a, an international organization which is doing a wonderful social work uh, apart from his very close connection with the indian corporate ad advisor selishbhai has been a visionary uh, uh, a visionary promoter of digital transformation across the sectors and in all walks of life not just the business he has written uh, a book on the digital professional and that is a thorough book guiding as a chartered accountant writing on technology and advising and leading the whole chartered accountant community and professional community how digitalization can transform the professional life as a champion of governance selishbhai is also the founder and vice chairman of goiva which is one of the few organization concentrating and focusing the corporate governance and advisory in that area uh, he has also been on the board of various professional bodies and organizations the list is pretty long uh, and uh, every day you know the list is so dynamic that selishbhai is uh, getting into and giving best of him you know to all the walks of the life and the business so with that uh, i would request sailesh bhai to address us on today's subject of digital transformation of indian businesses sailesh bhai please thank you very much nipam bhai and let me express my complete and total delight at being on the ama platform again i have very deep respect for the andabad management association for everything you all have done what you stand for the awards and accolades that you have richly deserved and won and for all the great work you are doing to energize the management community uh, all over your region and perhaps all over the country and now all over the world because you now have access through this medium to anybody who just logs on so kudos to all of you and uh, delighted to be with this wonderful management association 
so let me let me talk about digitalization first in terms of how do you get to be an exponential organization maybe that's a great place to start how can you become 10x of what you are don't think linearly think exponentially think in a way that will dramatically alter your course your future and there's a particular way that you can approach becoming 10x let me share that with you and let me at the end of my talk get a little bit of feedback from you as to whether you feel energized to attempt that transition or that move towards a 10x exponential organization so here goes what all do you need first of all you need a massively transformational purpose you cannot say that i want to add to my roi by 5% in one year or two years or whatever your purpose has to be defined in terms of how do you want to change the world why is it so massive and so transformational that you will do everything that it takes to make you that exponential organization so that's the first thing first step you need to take then you need to adopt a whole lot of approaches and attitudes so let's look at what kind of approaches and attitudes you need to adopt first and foremost perhaps what you need to do is to become agile and adaptive completely agile and adaptive so that whatever comes up whatever challenge you face you will be in a position to get beyond it if as we also four months ago the lockdowns happened activities stopped people lost their turnovers there was a whole lot of Uh, reorganization that needed to be done people started focusing on cash on cost cutting and on making sure that people remain safe the people who did that in an agile and adaptable way have made huge strides and have completely transformed their own ways of working let me give you four data points which are in public domain which exemplify this agility and this adaptability ambija cement and acc had in the month of june their highest ever achieved ebitda in history and these companies are already some of the most uh, aggressive profitable companies that there are but what they did was they adopted these three mantras completely control over cost getting to cash and making sure assure that people felt safe coming to work in fact what they were able to achieve is that people feel safer going to work than staying at home and that was the extent to which they transformed take torrent pharmaceutical itself first quarter of this year which is april to june became a huge growth quarter for the company because they were agile they were adaptive they were able to make sure that their essential operations continue to work they put in huge amount of agility and ability to make sure that that will uh completely um transform their ability to make sure that uh, they can deliver the right performance regardless of the external environment and they did and take 
a company like Blue Star, which has to operate in a physical world. But what they had the possibility to do was to deeply cut costs and variableize as many costs as possible. So they were able to knock off in one quarter 70% of their costs. And that is the hallmark of something that is agile and adaptable. The second big trait you have to develop is to be completely data driven in every aspect. All your decisions have to be driven by accurate, on tap, available, well processed data. If you can become data driven and data led, then you can do quick pivots. You don't need to wait because you have the information, you have the analyzed data based on which you can make that pivot. You need to have next a very tight and very symbiotic connect with your communities, the communities from which you draw your inputs. So your vendors, your suppliers, people who provide goods and services to you, and the community of your customers. But perhaps most importantly, the community of your employees. And if you can work with these communities in a way that you build everything to make sure that these communities will come together and work with you to actually deliver those exponential results, then you can make them happen. Community is critically important. All your communities must be able to relate to your massively transformational purpose. And if you can achieve that through your communication, through working hard with them, through your actual actions on the ground, through the way you deal with them, you will find that that connect and that glue will completely transform you. Then what you need is that complete and absorbed commitment of the people who are in leadership roles. So the founding team's commitment to every aspect of your business has to be absolute 100% completely driven by purpose. And you need to have one, maximum two, breakthrough ideas. So let's take those two or three breakthrough ideas which have transformed whole businesses. The obvious examples that will keep coming back at you are Uber and Airbnb. But let's take a company called GitHub, which was acquired by Microsoft uh, at a valuation of seven and a half billion dollars. GitHub has no assets. It has no real physical uh, properties. It's the idea that you can create a whole micro enterprise and connect it completely with a larger organization through digital connects. And GitHub became an absolutely stunning success story. Microsoft bought it for seven and a half billion dollars. That is the definition of what you can achieve through three properties that every transformational company has, every exponential organization has. They are digitalized, they are trust creating and trust providing, and they have a level of commitment which is extraordinary. Now let's move to what we can do and define 
in terms of our near environment how do you become digitally atmanirbhar in india what are the two or three key technologies that we need to adopt as a nation and as people who are blessed to be part of an association like ama who have a business who have a vocation who have some opportunities and availabilities essentially there are three technologies that i would uh, i would recommend you consider very carefully in manufacturing the entire erstwhile subtractive manufacturing uh, idea has completely given way to additive manufacturing or 3d printed manufacturing at one time it used to be extremely expensive technology to adopt to design to find materials but over the last 5 years the acceleration of this technology has been of a quality that has been unprecedented and today there are at least 3 universities in the world which are absolutely focused on enabling this transformation to happen from subtractive manufacturing to additive manufacturing what what does it do it takes away all costs of waste completely no loss of material no returns what you sell is of the quality you promise and therefore the returns get down to zero and you can do scale manufacturing both at a upper scale and at a lower scale without any grave difficulties and therefore 3d printing or additive manufacturing has become something that everybody is just turning to and i would recommend that the second perhaps again not so obvious technology digital technology is the technology which drives vertical agriculture so imagine that every plant is treated as if it's an individual so personalizing at the root level every plant is something that you can today bring to bear upon the productivity of what you grow and that can create a phenomenal digital property which will give you productivity save water add to your ability to reach wherever you need to reach fresh product at a price that people who can afford to pay so vertical agriculture is something that needs to come into our digital thinking as we decide to become obviously every domain has to have augmented intelligence and if you can augment the intelligence of every domain then you have artificial intelligence you have machine learning incorporated you are already part of some blockchain and if you can adapt to robotic process automation for all the routines you will stop making those avoidable errors which block you from attaining those extraordinary high levels of productivity and performance that an exponential organization must have how do you adopt this how does an organization become digital so think about it in this simple way you need to capture the data sets which are happening in your domain in your sphere of activity as and when they occur because data sets have the quality that if you don't capture them if you don't set up for capturing them they'll be lost forever and you can't go back into history and capture them with the same degree of comfort so set up for making sure that everything that you do begins to get a digital footprint and what you need to do is to make sure that this digital footprint can get analyzed put them through an analytics machine 
digital exhaust has to be converted into what I call insight. That insight has to be converted to action. And that action has to be put through the sieve of whether that action is productively delivering the one major metric that you are trying to optimize or trying to make better. And the feedback loop that you create will be the machine learning part of your digital program. And once you have this launched, it will keep improving your enterprise until you reach your massively transformational purpose and you become 10x of where you are. Very important that in this context, you reimagine your domain. And this is something that we need to bring to the table in almost every activity that we wish to engage in. What is important is to benchmark and model the entire value chain that you are engaged in. This is what delivers the value in a digital world. Let me end by giving you the seven transformational processes that lead to a digital organization. First of it is the willingness for you to be the disruptor. You need to remodel, reimagine, reconstruct every aspect of your value proposition. Very important to disrupt and disrupt everything, every part of your organization, the way you are organized, your people, your interactions, your information technology, your accounting, your auditing, everything. Disrupt it. Second, don't be in a hurry. Be deceptive. Make sure that all these changes actually catch on. Obviously, the third D has to be, if you cannot represent your physical reality through a digital footprint, you simply can't cross the Rubicon. And therefore, very important that every physical interaction happening in your domain is recorded digitally and the data sets are actually created in the way that we talked about earlier. Then you need to dematerialize. How can you cut costs structurally? You can cut costs structurally if you simply don't need that physical reality at all. It's what Uber did. It dematerialized the whole idea of a taxi cab. A person owning his own vehicle converted it into a mobility enabling device and that is what created what we now know is it's become a verb you know you can uberize so many things people can think about dematerialization in terms of uberization then there is a question of demonetization you extract the cost as i said if you use 3d printing you can pull out three trillion dollars of inventory which the world needs today simply to make sure that operations have that insurance and that comfort in their thinking that operations will not stall so very important to completely get to a new cost curve that's your demonetization then what you need is delocalization. You must make where you operate from, the physical space where you operate from, completely irrelevant. Just imagine what will happen to restaurants, or what will happen to real estate, or what will happen to retail, or what will happen to uh, many other industries like hospitality, cruise liners, uh, aircrafts, all of them. 
unless they are able to pivot to a situation where where they operate from becomes irrelevant and reimagine, restructure, redo their entire organization, cannot cross the Rubicon. And finally, you need to democratize, which is make it available to people at a scale and at a price that they can afford. So if you are able to create your MTP, you have your digitalization and trust in place. You have your chosen new technologies deployed in a convergent way. And you're able to deploy the seven Ds of digitalization and of disruption. Then you have a chance of having a digital organization will be, which, which can be 10x of what you have already. That is the opportunity and that is the future that I would suggest we should all focus on. With that, I'd love to open it up to question answers so that we have enough time for interaction. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Sailesh Bhai. I think a uh, uh, lot of uh, new insight, uh, more particularly, you know, this whole new thing of uh, in the time of despair currently, uh, we are thinking of, and you are giving us a thought of exponential organization where it's not just the growth multiplier, but exponential growth. And that can be achieved only with the transformation and digitalization. So, sir, uh, uh, I have a few posers, you know, that uh, I think in continuation of whatever you said, uh, some fillers like if we look at India versus some of the developed countries of the world, I would consider US, many part of Western Europe, uh, Japan, and more particularly now our neighbor China. Where do we stand in terms of uh, the digital initiatives or digitalization efforts? How are we yeah. compared? That's a great question. I think in in government systems, we have adopted digitalization to a phenomenal degree of effectiveness. The whole idea of directly transferring benefits to recipients all over the country, particularly in rural India, after we opened up the Jandhan accounts and we, uh, you know, the Jam Trinity began to work we did a phenomenal accomplishment in terms of digital transformation. So in terms of that one aspect of delivery of resources to where they need to go, if they are starting from a government, we have done a whole lot of work. But there are many other spaces where India as a country has huge unexploited opportunity. And some of them are our legal process, our land records, our delivery of every government service on an e-platform. These are transformational opportunities that we have not picked up. Who has done the best across the globe? And I think if we were to be unbiased, we have to say that the country which has adopted digitalization uh, to the best has been China, surprisingly. The way that they have been able to transform their per capita GDP, integrate converging technologies everywhere. They are number one in the world in AR, VR. They are number one in the world in deploying artificial intelligence. They are number one in the world in terms of getting all of their e-commerce uh, going in a way that the last mile delivery, the final payments and all of that is done. They are also the first country where they will have a digital currency which is issued by their uh, central bank. And that's a transformational new idea that they are bringing to the table. So China leaves the pack. The number of patents they have, the number of 
uh, areas in which they have been able to deploy technology at scale and in a convergent manner is really exceptional. Clearly, the most valuable companies in the world are the US companies which are leading this thrust. And let's not forget that all of them have massive businesses in China. I, I must say that the US companies, the FANGs as they are called, have led this digitalization process. Japan made its contribution through the efforts of SoftBank, where they did massive funding and financing of startups in the digital area. And they, they gave them huge legs up. Europe, very surprisingly, with the sole exception of Germany, perhaps, and Israel in terms of uh, uh, cybersecurity, have lagged behind. And therefore, the world has a very, very unexpected pecking order in terms of who has actually adopted digitalization in the best manner. But now think of what's going to happen as the geopolitics drive the completely new formations between nations. And you can see that a completely new and different picture can emerge with India uh, taking a very center stage position because of its competence, its large number of available digital resources, educated people, all of that. So that's a very, very big uh, opportunity for India to lead the world because it can lead digitalization. So, sir, um, so that's, that's good hope for India. Uh, do you think uh, uh, it would be uh, it would be because of the Digital India Initiative, the large number of people and the mobile using community already um, moving towards digital banking and transformation of our financial system into the digital? Would that be the primary uh, pivot to move towards that or we need to do uh, something more? Or more well, particularly as, the area in which yeah. we need to do more? So, I mean, as I pointed out, all that you said is, of course, required to be fully digital. And wherever we can move to digitalization, we must. So as I keep saying, the world is going to be divided into two parts. One that is digitalized and one that is wanting to get digitalized. That's it. There are going to be only two parts. Those who don't want to be any part of the digitalization process will, sorry to say, not have a great future because the world is turning that way. All interaction, we were forced in the last three, four months to have virtually all interactions digitally. So in addition to everything you mentioned, three things have to happen. We need to choose those converging technologies that we can bring to bear to transform our organization. And I mentioned three of them uh, earlier, and I would repeat them because they are very important to emphasize. 3D printing, virtual, uh, vertical agriculture, and a whole streaming of data and the whole analytics of data to make sure that that is enabled. Because unless all of this is put together, and you take all your people together. There was a question I saw on the chat box. Where somebody asked about how do you get people onboarded onto this? I think people are waiting to be led into this. Let me give you a data point from last in Tupelo. We, at the time of the lockdown, all our physical access to our vast millions of customers simply stopped. So for us to collect the dues which people were willing to pay became difficult. But very quickly, as we adopted to getting this touch digital, 
we started moving from let's say as soon as the lockdown first lockdown opened up we went to 5x of what we were doing at the time of the lockdown then we went to 25x this month we are at 250x and next month we will catch up to almost 98% of the pre covid physical collection ratio delivered in a combination of digital practices so that is the adaptability and agility that we need to bring to make sure that uh, digitalization actually delivers value so uh, so one question that i am seeing here is uh, uh, you know how can how how can fintech or how fintech innovations and the growing competition in india yeah. is actually uh, impacting the whole process of digitalization and automation oh in a remarkable way because all the connects and the entire ecosystem is evolving around the innovative uh, entrepreneurial highly Uh, committed fintech uh, initiatives that are being taken you take the payment space you take the delivery space you take the space of uh, investment you take the space of uh, saving you take the space of insurance everywhere the fintech connect to a mainline organization has become the driver for creating value for actually just operating existing because if you don't have and you you simply can't recreate all of that you need to connect with the fintechs which are operating in a purposeful synergistic manner in order to reach your own goal of completely transforming what you are doing and that can happen only by creating the ecosystem so don't think of yourself as an independent organization with your own set of communities think of yourself and your communities as part of an ecosystem and that's where the role of fintechs mainline companies creating this whole new paradigm will become clear i think that is very well said sir i think uh, fintech has probably changed the way we have been banking lending borrowing and uh, it has reached Everything. out to the smallest person in the country uh, absolutely the, uh, sir you were talking about uh, the digital 3d print, uh, 3d printing in manufacturing so uh, there are lots of small industries in uh, auto parts manufacturing i'm talking about the manufacturing sector the engineering sector uh, would 3d printing be helpful there and can they adopt 3d printing is it uh, is it feasible for them absolutely it has become democratized in the last 5 years the unfortunate part is that this seems to be a open secret which we have kind of missed and one of the people who can take up the role of catching up is a large industries who should make it their business to make sure that they bring in their entire value chain of suppliers into this 3d printing world because they would love to have completely zero return kind of supplies high quality delivered to them on time no need for their suppliers to wait for some component missing from some place because they have you know actually today 3d printing can print the machines with which you want to do 3d printing based manufacturing rockets are being built using 3d printing satellites are being built using 3d printing elon musk has a whole assembly line of 3d printers which they have set up to make sure that, that all of these multiple small satellites which they are releasing to create the satellite web around the world uh, comes into existence there is no reason on earth 
for our medium and small scale industries not to join this 3D printing revolution. We need to get out there, bring it in, relearn, retool, reimagine all of our MSMEs and get down to making sure that we actually can take the leadership role in manufacturing. Otherwise, you know, this whole wonderful, glorious notion which is being sold to us that because China is no longer the flavor of the uh, month, we will get a whole lot of new manufacturing. We will, but we will not get it if we do not set it up in the same efficient additive manufacturing paradigm that they did and actually get better at it. Thank you, sir. That was, that was very encouraging and valuable for the, uh, for the mid-sized businesses that 3D printing has already reached out and uh, it is within the reach of even the smaller businesses. Uh, that's a pretty good news. Um, with sir COVID-19, you know, shaping, rechanging, I mean, changing and reshaping our lives and the way we do businesses. Um, how digitalization is going to be uh, changing the way we are doing our day-to-day -day businesses forever? Or how much likely we are all going to be going back to the same old ways as soon as <laughs> you know this threat of uh, COVID-19 recedes in next few months probably, or as soon as the vaccines are available. Uh, I wish we never go back to our past. I think the amount of digitalization that has happened in the last, say, four months is more than what has happened in the last 10 years, perhaps, in many cases. The only thing people are not stopping from investing in today is digitalization, speeding up every process making it better quality oriented, getting the cost out of the equation, reaching the customer faster, making sure there are no returns, all, and then tracking all of this, the digital exhaust and the insight, which I talked about, and the actions driven from there. That's what causes the dramatic change to actually get delivered and happen. And therefore, I wish nobody goes back to thinking that, oh, let me go back to my old world, the cozy world of doing things at my own pace. That has gone forever. And I think it is far superior for us to aspire to a completely new paradigm and a new world that we can create together. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I think with one last question, uh, you know, uh, I have the questions pouring in. Uh, uh, and I'm looking at a clock, but we still have probably the time to cover one more question. Uh, I see quite a few questions coming around that during this period of uh, COVID, you know, we all believed that the businesses have stalled, nothing is selling, nobody is going to be making profit, it is all going to be scare all around. And it is true with some of the businesses as well, where the physical presence is a must, more particularly with the small business. But some of the companies in India also have shown, as you rightly gave examples of Torrent Pharmaceutical. Uh, now, pharmaceutical, probably people would understand that, you know, people are scared and medicines are selling more, probably, you know, that's a general belief. But would you would you throw some light from your vast connect with all the leading corporates of the country as to what is the key? I mean, when what is that key that some of these corporates have still managed to continue to grow, uh, show a strong bottom line? How this could be possible? Of course, uh, and the role of technology digitalization. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't want to leave behind an impression that things are hunky-dory. Certainly, there is going to be a huge amount of uh, value destruction because 
if you lose your turnover for one and a half months in the middle of a busy season, as for example, we did at Blue Star, it's very hard to recover unless you are so agile and so adaptable that you are able to cut costs at a rate that is faster. So to my mind, the first key that we need to think about is how can you variableize all costs? That's the first thing. The second key is how can you reimagine your business? So let me give you the example of restaurants. And uh, let me tell you how they are reimagining their business. So what they have decided to do is to make the dining table in your home their restaurant table and deliver the experience to you as a service. So what they will do is they will send liveried waiters with the cutlery that you need and the food that you wish to consume as a family to your home, create the experience that you might have had, the fine dining experience that you remember for so long, right there in your home, on your dining table, with their waiters, their food. And think about it. There is a, a possibility because of all the uh, virtual interactions that we are all having for a chef in India to have an online uh, food making or a master chef master class on the fly with a Japanese sushi chef out of Japan and actually give you your Japanese oriented meal in your own home with liveried waiters from India and cutlery of your choice and create that lasting experience for you. So they are, they are doing this reimagining. And they are, if you see some of the marketing videos that they are now sending across in an activity like restaurants, which were completely beaten, they have been able to transform into uh, back to a new paradigm cross the Rubicon. So you can have experience as a service, you can have recipe as a service, you can have any physical location as a service. So many different innovations came up through this reimagining. And I can give you multiple examples of people who have completely, auditing is getting reimagined, for example. And it is, uh, it's, it's amazing how quickly that has transformed almost fully to digital, all accounting, all auditing, all shifted, pivoted. And now people are reluctant to go back to the old way of going into a client's office, occupying a huge chamber, making sure that people are continually attending to you. All of that is gone. So there is a huge opportunity that this period has given to us to rethink, reimagine restructure, reset uh, everything that we do. Uh, thank you very much, Silesh Bhai. I think uh, it is a very reassuring, eye-opening, insightful uh, discussion. I would not say address because you answered so many questions from, and all of them, variety of questions. Uh, I believe, uh, and probably that's the last reflection I would like to have from you before we end this session. Uh, moving from the traditional way of doing any business or activity to and transforming into the digital and auto, digitalization and automation, the key probably lies in our mind. Uh, whether we want to move there whether it is possible and when we have done something for most of our life you know in one way it is extremely difficult to convince ourselves and to believe and even if we believe and convince the first confusion is how to you know how do we do this we are not trained for that yeah what should we do sir i mean many of us 
are still in that uh, in that uh, doldrum as to yes we understand you are telling this and we do understand we agree with you sir but how to do this how to unlock ourselves how to unlearn and relearn uh, what a fantastic answer? question nipam bhai it's it's my favorite question of any session so i'm saying let ama take up this role of making instances of super delivery through digitalization available to its members so create the opportunity for people to get the benchmarking experience of an organization which has adopted it take some of your people to places which have actually robotized for example their warehouses so that an entire warehouse is operated by three human beings instead of the earth while situation where there were so many uh, instances where you simply couldn't find what you needed because you needed to search for it and maybe if it had shifted a little bit you simply couldn't get to it now the only way to get the confidence and to learn and to adapt quickly is by actually seeing it through a process of mentoring or through a, through a process of actually visiting and learning and imbibing and opening up today the entire faucets of generosity are open this is the right time for an organization like ama to take the lead and make sure that they identify these islands of excellence islands of innovation and actually either videotape them and make them available to their members on a pull basis or actually taking them and making sure that they can get the live experience in a place where they can learn adapt change their mindset be confident about it all of us will have to leave the comfort of the past and we'll have to look at how to quickly change become agile and adaptable and that's the key and ama can play a great role in it <laughs> thank you sir we will definitely do that it's a very very valuable suggestion we do such trips but i think with reference to you know uh, automation and digitalization uh, we can definitely take some special initiative and that would be definitely useful to many of our members uh, so thank you very much for being with us first of all Thank accepting you. this invitation and uh, addressing us and giving us a very insightful uh, talk uh, we are very thankful to you and Thank you. Uh, it's we a will pleasure being here and we'll come back to you again you know with uh, uh, any such uh, subject or topic to share your uh, knowledge uh, with all our members i also thank everyone here to participate uh, in this webinar and in this wonderful talk and uh, uh, for even raising some very very interesting question i have tried to cover most of them but naturally could not cover anyone if there is any other question selesh bhai we will probably send it to you and uh, sure. for your for your reflection thank sure. you very much thank you thank you, thank you very much